Hello and welcome to our next video about thermal measure measurement. Okay, this time we are talking about thermal elements. These thermal elements do use a certain effect called thermoelectric effect or Seebeck effect. I will draw now what you can understand from this, yeah? what this might be. We do have two materials. There is some material A and there is some material B. They are connected at the conductively connected. Okay, so I not only call this material, I will call this metal. Metal A, and this here is metal B. Here we do have the connections. And here we do have measurement point. We'll write here measurement point. This is where we're interested in our temperature theta. Okay, theta m I write. And here I also have a temperature. Yeah. And between here and here, we do have different temperatures. Yeah? There are some different temperatures. And now, what this Mr. Seebeck, Thomas, Thomas Johannes Seebeck, observed actually. Yeah? the Seebeck effect or thermoelectric effect. Actually Seebeck himself believed this is a thermomagnetic effect because he realized this, yeah, he built something up, yeah, and there was a compass underneath this by accident there was a compass underneath this and every time he touched here these these endings the compass moved a little bit uh, and he thought this was some and then he realized if he put here a candle and make this even harder then the compass is moving further so he thought he's watching some effect of the temperature he realized it's the temperature difference between this point and this point which makes the compass move, but he thought he's uh, uh, seeing some thermomagnetic effect. Yeah? However, some years later they discovered it's not a thermomagnetic effect, it's a thermoelectric effect, and we see the magnetic influence on the needle by the current which is running. Okay. What is happening? What is happening? If here is heat, yeah? Then we see in a certain metal, yeah, we do see a potential difference between a cooler place and the hotter place. You can think about, yeah, let's say here the the the, the movements, the, the charges, uh, they are moving very wild because they are very hot, yeah. So they need more room and they tend to to shift the other charges a little bit away so that the pressure from the heat and this place pressure let's call it here is is equalized so this means here more charged particles than here and this reflects in a potential difference okay so if i have only one metal and do not really realize this because a metal a certain metal has a certain potential difference at a certain temperature difference and if these two metals are the same, I have here the same potential like here. However, this is some material constant. So this means 
some other metal might have a different potential, thermal potential, at the same temperature difference. So if metal A has some difference, yeah, and metal B has some other difference, this means the potential of this and this point are not the same, yeah, and I can measure here a voltage. Yeah. Potential difference means a voltage which reflects the temperature. It's not that easy, yeah, because it's not really reflecting the temperature. It actually is reflecting the temperature difference between the measurement point yeah, and the reference point. So this here I call reference point. reference point. Here the delta temperature is reflected by this thermal voltage. Okay? This is the Seebeck effect is actually this thermal voltage, yeah, this thermal potential, and this is the use of the Seebeck effect. Actually I can only measure temperature differences between two points. Okay? And how big or how not big this temperature difference is, it is defined also by the combination of metals I'm using. Yeah. There are, and here in thermal elements, it's not just like said on, on thermal resistors, this is platinum, and then there is a lot of things, different other things, but they are not that important. Yeah. Here, a lot of things are important. There, there are uh, several types defined. Yeah. So there is, for instance, the most commonly used type is type K. Yeah. Type K. This is nickel chrome, nickel. Okay. It is. It is uh, really high temperature those things yeah it's defined from minus 270 to up to 1300 degrees celsius i mean it's huge yeah then there is also the deck j for instance that's iron copper nickel yeah then there's the type n yeah? that's nickel chrome silicium nickel silicium yeah? There are several types. Yeah. There are. They are always defined by a big letter. Yeah. They have their. They have the definements from how many degree to how many degree and so on, and they have the pairing. Yeah. So these are the most common one: the K, the J, and and the N. Yeah. Okay. But there is also platinum for sure. So there is the type R, for instance. There is the type S. Yeah. So this this platinum rhodium rhodium platinum there are different types they are defined differently yeah. in your script in your script you do have a list of them yeah. you do, don't really need to know this from the top of your head but please keep in mind there are different types of thermal elements and you have to select one yeah, according your temperature range. Okay? So that's one thing, the metal combination. The other thing is the temperature of the reference point. This needs to be as constant as possible. Yeah? Because if this is constant and I measure the delta difference, the delta temperature difference, yeah, then I know exactly what the temperature is here how to keep this constant. Yeah. There is either the possibility of keeping it constant with, with a thermostat. Yeah. Thermostat, I will use this. Yeah. Constant temperature achieved by thermostat, which is keeping, for instance, 50 degrees Celsius. 
It's heated electrically. It's keeping constant 50 degrees Celsius. I measure the delta and I know, okay, this is 10 degrees more than 50 or 5 degrees less than 50 and so on. Yeah. So keep it on a thermostat. Okay. If we have a proper proper control system, we reach here around plus minus 0 0.5 Kelvin yeah, accuracy. Works pretty well. Second method, very easy method, is guessing. I guess just the temperature of the connection points of this reference temperature. I say, okay, the ambient temperature is, let's say, 22 degrees Celsius. Yeah? So, I guess in this small housing there is 3 degrees more. I guess it's 25 degrees. Yeah? If it does not really matter, yeah? that's accurate enough. Yeah? So, we are around, uh, let's say, plus minus 5 Kelvin yeah? by guessing this connection temperature. If we don't have very accurate measurements, let's say if we're interested if someone something has 7, 750 degree or 800 degree, then this is good enough. Because it does not really matter if it has 750 or 755. Okay. Guessing. It's also one probable thing. Schätzung. Estimation. Maybe estimation would be a better word. <laughs> Just guessing. And then there's the possibility, experimental, I'm a little bit more experimental. Yeah. This is this is a cold a ice bath. So there is distilled water, there's ice in distilled water, a combination between water and ice has always zero degrees Celsius and it's your reference point. Okay? So use an ice bath. Then you have zero degree here. Okay? Or a little bit more this is for for uh, let's say uh, measurements uh, transient measurements, so measurements which are not always there. Yeah. Hey please refill some ice in our measurement. No, it will not happen. Yeah. However, there's also a so-called thermostat, uh, and this will keep an ice point thermostat. Yeah. Thermostat. Yeah. This ice point thermostat, they are produced usually of some Peltier element. And they are very accurate. Yeah? They really maintain zero degree Celsius with an accuracy of plus minus zero dot zero one Kelvin. Yeah? They recognize each melting and so on ice point thermostat. These are very accurate. This is often done. Yeah? This is also often done. Yeah? And if it needs to be more accurate, use this. And if you don't have the possibility to use this, and it's just a temporary measurement, use this. Okay, All the things are just there to know the temperature of the reference point. And then, from this, I can measure the delta temperature to the measurement point. Yeah, thermoelectric element, therefore the name, thermoelectric element, that's one thing. Next videos, next video, yeah, we're talking about different other methods. Yeah. For this video, we are done. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.